the argument from design is not a new argument. It's actually a quite old argument and goes back at least as far as a rather classical uh, treatment of this whole argument that was first developed by a fellow named Paley uh, in the early 1800s. Piling detail upon detail, Paley described in intricate uh, detail many different adaptations found in living things and then made the analogy between living things and a watch. Obviously, a watch requires a watchmaker and the very, very amazing adaptation of living things to their environment, in his mind, clearly suggested some kind of an intelligent designer. About 60 years later, Darwin came along, wrote his Origin of Species, uh, and was able to explain not all, but at least many of these adaptations through natural selection, discrediting much of Paley's argument. From uh, 1859 until about 1960, that's pretty much where uh, the matter lay. In the first half of the 20th century, I think it was widely believed by many people who work in the field of science that we would ultimately explain everything that we see in the natural world in terms of chemistry and physics alone, rendering belief in God not impossible, but simply superfluous or unnecessary. However, beginning in 1960 and continuing on through the remaining part of the 20th century, a remarkable thing occurred many, many new discoveries in many diverse fields of science began to change the way many scientists saw uh, the situation. And many became more and more uh, uh, persuaded that maybe chemistry and physics isn't ultimately going to explain everything that we see after all. There have been a lot of different uh, articles published in newspapers, magazines, and books over the last 40 years that illustrate this change, which I think has been gradual, but over time cumulatively very dramatic, in the way scientists think. There was a major conference held in Washington, D.C. in 1988 that brought together scientists from around the world to consider this very question, uh, the character of the universe, does it appear to be designed, or can we ultimately explain everything that we see uh, in terms of natural laws alone? Uh, a reporter from the Washington Post, in summarizing a rather nicely done article that she wrote about the conference, concluded with the following comment about the uh, impression she had talking to many of the attendees. Many scientists who not long ago were certain that the universe was created or peopled by accident are having second thoughts and concede the possibility that some intelligent creative force may in fact have been necessary. This has really gotten to be more mainstream media in the last 10 years in particular. In 1992, a cover article in Time magazine was entitled uh, what does science tell us about God? At about the same time, Discovery Magazine had an article. Oops. Uh, Discovery Magazine had a, a cover article entitled Ten Great Unanswered Questions of Science, three of which are very germane to our topic for this evening. And more recently, Newsweek Magazine in 1998 had a major article discussing this whole business is what we're learning in science pointing to the idea of some kind of an intelligent creator. Now, there have been a whole host of books that have been published in the last 15 years as well. One important one that I inadvertently left off, The Design Inference by Bill Dembski, uh, but a whole host of books written by uh, people, many of whom are not necessarily people of faith, uh, and published in many cases by uh, major publishing, publishing houses such as Cambridge or Oxford have appeared, uh, and I think have dramatically influenced at a popular level uh, the thinking of many people who are interested in this particular topic. Certainly most scientists, I think, are aware uh, of this uh, trend. Now, I don't want to pretend that all of the people who are working in the field of science and all the people who write books are in agreement. Uh, obviously, there's some major detractors with regard to this whole thesis that I'm going to be discussing this evening, probably the most well-known of which is Richard Dawkins, a well-known atheist who happens to be a biologist at Oxford University. And he's written a series of books, the most recent of which isn't on my slide, uh, but probably two of the best-known uh, the Blind Watchmaker, Why the Evidence of Evolution Reveals a Universe Without Design, and Climbing Mount Improbable. In both of